for the past couple of years I have been using this KP184 electronic load for my daily tasks of you know power supply and battery testing and it has worked very well and it was reliable compact cheap but as time goes by new models appear on the market sometimes offering better functionality for a similar cost uh, if not uh, better cost so today we're going to look at the East Tester ET5410A plus and this unit was sent in for free by the tooltop aliexpress shop and i recommend you check out their online shop for other great tools and uh, they're currently selling this unit for a discounted price click the link in the description below there's a few things i'm interested in when looking at an electronic load the first one is the accuracy and precision of the unit i want my measurements to be accurate and if possible down to one millivolt and one milliamp resolution if these measurements are accurate then the calculated ones like energy and capacity will also be accurate second is the functionality ideally it should have a nice uh, graphical user interface giving me all of the information i need it should support remote voltage sensing it should have easy battery testing functionality Optionally, I want a PC connection for data logging purposes. Third is the build quality. I want this thing to last, so it has to be built reasonably well. I want it to be safe to use. I don't want this to be an electrical shock hazard or have the risk of burning down. So we're going to check all of these things in this video. The unit was nicely packed and protected. I just haven't kept the packaging to show it on video. And inside the box, I got the electronic load itself and also a uh, mains IEC cable uh, with the proper Euro European plug and some uh, spare fuses inside this bag with the user manual which is actually quite clear and easy to follow. Now let's start talking about the specs of the unit. It can do 400 watts maximum, 0 to 150 volts, 0 to 40 amps. So whichever voltage current combo you choose, it has to be 400 watts maximum. It has a resolution of 1 millivolt and 1 milliamp, but depending on the range, uh, it switches to 10 millivolts and 10 milliamps above 20 volts and 3 amps. It supports the usual operating modes of uh, constant current, constant voltage, constant resistance and constant power, but it also adds transients, test mode, battery test mode, and very interestingly, LED test mode, where it simulates the characteristics of an LED diode, which starts drawing current, based on its forward voltage biasing in terms of protection features once again we have the standard ones over voltage over current over power and over temperature protection before i go any further with this review let me introduce the sponsor of this video pcbway.com a professional pcb manufacturer with fast turnaround times and excellent build quality but not only that you can also get your entire product manufactured with pcbway because they offer services like pcb assembly enclosure manufacturing part sourcing so give them a try on your next order on the back of the unit we have a fused iec mains input this works with a universal input uh, 100 to 240 volts we also get a uh, usb type b port for pc connectivity and uh, this interesting looking pluggable screw connector that hosts an optional RS-232 interface, an optional RS-485 interface. Uh, I believe this unit has both one trigger input, two outputs, one that signals test in progress and another one that signals a test pass fail result. And uh, those guys are open collector outputs, which is awesome because you can pull them up to your desired voltage level. There are some additional pins in here which are unused and um, disappointingly this unit does not appear to support remote voltage sensing we'll have a closer look at how that uh, affects our measurement accuracy in a few minutes on the front of the unit we have a 2.8 inch tft color display with a resolution of 320 by 240 pixels we have a uh, clicky uh, power switch a rotary encoder knob dedicated buttons for the uh, main functions and a bunch of additional buttons here for navigating the GUI and selecting the additional functions. The banana input connectors are spaced at about 47 millimeter distance. That's not a standard uh, bench uh, test equipment spacing, although you probably wouldn't use any standard spacing pluggable connectors on an electronic load. While these uh, connectors uh, look and feel solid, they do feel like cheap connectors and we'll take a look at uh, how well these can handle higher currents and if their temperature rises a little bit later so i think we're ready to power on the unit and uh, 
peel off this uh, protection film on the display. I can hear the cooling fan inside. Uh, it is under microcontroller supervision, so it, it, it did lower its RPM, but even so, in idle, you can still hear it. It's pretty noisy, definitely louder than the KP184. However, given the nature of the beast, I don't think you will be bothered by a cooling fan noise on an electronic load, which inherently needs to run a cooling fan uh, to be able to dissipate all of that heat. So you would expect an electronic load to be noisy. By default, this thing will start in uh, constant current mode and it signals that very clearly on uh, screen. And I like how we get the actual uh, current uh, voltage and uh, power shown here in a big font. The uh, set current is uh, to the right in a smaller font and the protection limits also shown on screen. So far, so good. Obviously superior to the KP184, which only had a more limited seven segment display. The uh, viewing angles are pretty decent on this uh, LCD. However, it is glossy and there's a bunch of uh, reflections. So depending on how you have lighting on your work workbench, you could be getting a, uh, a bad reflection. Actually turning on the load is done via the uh, on button. Uh, I wish this button was physically larger than the others or maybe a different color to make it stick out or even have it illuminated because then you could have a more clear indication uh, via the uh, light status if the load is on or not. Right now, if you turn the load on, there is only a very uh, small indication to show that which is the uh, CC indicator turns red. That's a small dot, so not a very clear indicator. Rotary encoder is uh, not clickable, so while you can navigate through the options, uh, you can't you know, click to start adjusting one of the options. You have to uh, click the uh, enter button and then you can start using the rotary knob for adjustment. You will, ha however, need to make use of the arrow keys uh, to move the cursor to the desired position for faster adjustment because the rotary knob does not appear to implement ve velocity sensing. But one thing to note is that while you have the load on, it is perfectly uh, possible to adjust the values while it's running. And even though I have nothing connected right now, it is measuring an offset voltage. One thing that you'll immediately notice is that you're only getting uh, 10 millivolts resolution with uh, the default settings and the user manual and the specs are claiming 1 millivolt and 1 milliamp. So this is a bit non-intuitive. It took me like half an hour to play and mess around with the settings before I noticed that inside the menu, there is a setting to manually select the range uh, low and high. So you have 20 volts, 3 amps for the low range and 150 volts and 40 amps for the high range and you get individual settings for current and voltage for this and by default the uh, uh, voltage setting is on the high range so you need to switch that to the low range if you only plan to do measurements up to 20 volts and you want to benefit from that one uh, millivolt resolution once you switch that to the low setting you'll uh, hear you'll you'll hear a relay clicking inside and then you get to benefit from the full resolution and for those that are wondering, here is a screenshot uh, of the firmware and hardware version I'm running here. And if you own a similar unit, please let me know in the comments below what firmware slash hardware version does yours have. The manufacturer website doesn't show any firmware downloads, nor does the internet provide any meaningful results for that. So you're probably stuck with what you get. To test the accuracy of the measurements on this uh, East Tester ET5410A+, I have it wired through my Precision Bench multimeters from HP slash Agilent and I did a few measurements and calculated the error on these for both voltage and current. I'll include the screenshot on screen. Uh, specs are claiming plus or minus 0.05% on the low range and 0.1% uh, on the high range. My measurements reference to my HP bench multimeters showed this to be on spec across the range I've tested for. Um, there is also an offset function in the menu, which I think is intended for compensating for voltage drop. But if you find yours to be off by a constant amount, uh, at least in the range that you're interested in, I think it can also be 
uh, calibrated or nulled out using that functionality. I also did a test at 26 amps by connecting multiple power supplies in parallel to reach that current capability. Uh, the banana jacks were measuring around 40 degrees Celsius in an ambient of 25, which is not bad but not great either. Uh, I also had a bunch of connectors parallel which wasn't helping because of their uh, contact resistance which was adding up. And some users which had an older hardware and firmware revision of this electronic load were complaining on the EEV blog forum that they couldn't get the battery discharge feature to work in constant resistance mode. Well, I've tested that, I've put in 4 ohms and the electronic load seems to be uh, doing just fine with those settings. It is uh, adjusting its parameters trying to keep that constant uh, resistance. So maybe they've uh, fixed that either in hardware and firmware and I have a new revision here. And before moving on and doing the turn on of the unit, let me quickly go back to the fact that this does not feature external voltage sensing. If you're wondering what impact that can have on your measurements, well, as you may be aware, wires uh, are not perfect. They do have a small but measurable internal resistance connectors too. And if you pass a high enough current, the voltage drop on that resistance becomes enough to throw your measurement off. For example, your device under test, which can be a battery, might be set to let's say 4 volts and it, might, it may be able to provide 50 amps of current. A, a set of 10 AWG test wire leads, um, let's say 1 meter long, will have a, uh, in practice, will have a resistance of let's say you know, 0 0.0364 ohms questionable connector contact resistance included. Now the voltage drop at 50 amps through uh, those test leads is uh, 0 0.0364 times 50, so that equals 1.82 volts. So while your battery will be supplying 4 volts, your load will be measuring 2.18 volts. And this means you'll have a serious error in your measurement and calculations, as well as cutting off too early if you set a cutoff voltage and you're planning to measure the capacity of that battery. So this is a very important topic if you're planning to do measurements over 10 amps with this particular electronic load. There are instructions on the forum on how to modify to include an external voltage sensing circuit. However, my advice would be to go for a different model that has external voltage sensing functionality already built in, like the KP184. That is if you plan to do daily measurements at more than 10 amps, or at least use that offset functionality by measuring uh, your voltage with an external multimeter and just compensate for it. So, so I think it's time for a teardown of the unit as I'm sure you're curious of the build quality of this unit. Um, it was fairly easy to take apart the top cover and now I'm going to start with the uh, mains input and earthing that we have on this uh, electronic load. Mains wiring is uh, insulated with heat shrink uh, earth is connected to the metal chassis, but it relies on the uh, screw we see here for the actual electrical connection uh, because in this case this PCB acts as an insulator between the earthing connection and the case. They almost got this right. Then they have this uh, small 12 volt uh, 1 amp switching power supply. This is supplying power to the unit and, and is offering that universal input. Uh, the mains is switched off through these wires to the uh, clicky switch on the front. We noticed the uh, massive tunnel shaped heatsink with its uh, cooling fan. We have six MOSFETs in total, three on the top, three on the bottom, each with its own um, current sensing uh, resistor shunt, each with its own current shunt, meaning that there is some kind of active uh, load balancing happening in here to make sure each MOSFET shares an equal current to the others. And then there are two additional uh, main current shunts uh, on this side. These would be in charge of the main current measurement which is shown on the LCD. I don't really like how these uh, 12 volt DC wires go down to the main PCB. It's a very tight fit with the outer case and these can uh, be very easily pinched. At least they put some uh, glue in here to hold them close to the heatsink. The same on uh, this side with the uh, flat ribbon cable uh, which runs in between the hot sink hot heatsink and the side of the case and I don't like how these MOSFETs do not have fully plated footprint holes to ensure a good 
a mechanical and electrical connection with the PCB. I don't like this flat flex connection either, it just runs into this weird path blocking some of the uh, vents of the enclosure. If I would design this, like I have all of this available space on this front PCB, why not move this connector down here, then place another one in the same region on the main PCB and then have just this short 90 degree bend flat flex connection that would be uh, much cleaner. Then if I flip this around, we can take a look at the uh, bottom side. Looking at the uh, back section, it doesn't show any RS-232 or RS-485 circuitry populated in here. Uh, so it is indeed optional circuitry, which I don't have on my model. I do, ap I do appreciate, however, that this whole section is isolated, so it is safe to connect to your computer. The main MCU is over here and it is a GD32F303 series, so quite a powerful MCU and if I'm not mistaken, at least on the original ST part, uh, this contains some pretty good built-in ADC and DAC functionality, so maybe they're making use of that, maybe they're using an external one. Uh, I just couldn't be bothered to identify all of the components on this PCB. And let me show you why we have these uh, strict rules about electrical safety, specifically earthing uh, with these uh, metal enclosures. Uh, take a look at this uh, secondary earth connection, uh, which is connected to the enclosure, and then goes through the PCB through this very thin line uh, back to the, the main earth connection. Now, there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong on the PCB to interrupt that uh, earthing before it gets to the enclosure. And then there is soldering here, which is forbidden. And why is soldering forbidden on the earth connection? Well, take a look at this uh, soldering. It's already three quarters of the way disconnected. So build quality is both good with regards to the general PCB assembly, but also bad with regards to mains earth wiring and general placement of wires and connectors throughout the system. I've got the unit uh, back together and I wanted to give the PC app via USB a quick try. However, it's one of those deals where the a manufacturer is keeping the software a secret. You can't find the single download link over the internet, so you have to go back to your seller and ask for it. I just didn't have time to do that before having to publish this video. Another thing that I did not test is the slew rate of the unit, but if you're the kind of uh, person that cares about a fast slew rate on the electronic load, I'm thinking you won't go for this particular model of electronic load. So I think it's generally safe to assume that this has a slower slew rate. And this pretty much concludes uh, my review of this electronic load. It has good things like a decent usable user interface via the TFT display, a GUI that shows good relevant information. It has uh, plenty of functionality built in for battery testing as well as some additional working modes. It has good accuracy and good specs. Build quality is both good uh, and bad as shown in the third down. Unfortunately, so far I have not seen a good affordable electronic load coming from China uh, without any shortcomings. They all lack in some regards, especially in the build quality. This one in particular does a little better than others I've seen, but still not good enough in my view. And if you are in the market for an electronic load, I think the KP184 is still better value for money if you can live with the 7 segment display, you'll get remote voltage sensing in return, which is built in. But should you decide to order this one, check out the link in the description below. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to support me making more videos like this one, you can do it on my Patreon with as little as $1 per month. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you next time.